Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 24th of April. Now, we'll see how we go today. There is news from the UK and Australia and from China, but I'm going to start off with some really good news from the United States, which by extension, I believe is good news for the world. And uh, we had been expecting for a long time, we've been predicting on this channel, a, a BA2 Omicron surge in the States. Well, I believe we are seeing a surge of infections, but we're not seeing a surge of positive tests and we're not seeing a surge of hospitalisation. So this is really the best of both worlds. We're getting lots of people who are being exposed, so generating natural immunity, but we're not getting a lot of people or a disproportionate amount of people getting sick or thankfully dying as hospitalisation rates and death rates in the States are both down. Now let's look at the evidence here. Here we have the uh, the variants in the state. So BA1 of course became more uh, predominant, the Omicron BA1. Then BA2 began to take over. And there's no question at all here we see that there's an increase in the BA2 subvariant 12.1. And this has been increasing here progressively as we can see. And so there's no reason at all to assume that this won't carry on increasing. In fact, it will. It'll be the same everywhere. Now, we don't have the Omicron B BA2 breakdown data from the UK yet. We know there's a combination of BA1 and BA2 together, but we will be seeing these variants discovered in the UK and they will become predominant. And the, the evidence is there. I believe that's the evidence there to see. And we'll give more evidence for that in just a minute. Now, uh, here we see the uh, the cases in the States, which, of course, is a very, very small subset of the infections. Uh, up slightly, I think it's probably fair to say there, but um, not a lot. Although, we, as we do believe, the infections are still going uh, high or are still high. Hospitalizations in the States, well, again, thankfully, bottom right-hand corner, slight increase, perhaps, coming into the grey data, but small compared to the number of people with infections. And likewise, deaths in the States have been so high for so long, appalling number of deaths in the States, but definitely going down now. And I'm not expecting that to go back up because I do believe there's a lot of uh, natural immunity being generated in the States now, which is, is the best possible news. Now, let me just show you where that is uh, from. So there's the link if you want that. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, things that people have been writing in um, recently. Now, I do get criticised for this, but I see it as a form of qualitative research. Um, but you, you can make of it what you want, but it is people's experiences. So um, this is from, from Jack. I'm in the northwest US and my personal observation is a good number of people I know and encounter have or are currently experiencing symptomatic COVID. So this is what we've been saying. There's a lot of infections at the moment. But that's not transposing through into a lot of cases, diagnosed infections, and it's not transposing through into hospitalizations. But it does make perfect sense with the increasing transmissible variants that we've been talking about. Uh, Jack thinks there's more cases now than in the peaks of 2020 and 2021, which is interesting. Um, as most people have been vaccinated, home test kits are available and most people are burned out on testing. So people just aren't testing. And this is this is understandable because... Um, well, let, 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 let Jack actually uh, mentions this himself. Um, um, and peep, so he says people are discouraged, burnt out on testing and are discouraged from years of government and media misinformation is exactly what he says. So sad that this is the, the position of mistrust of the population. There's little offered in the way of treatment or care unless the condition becomes very uh, severe. Um, I sense people may not be bothering with testing centres. So th this this supports the sort of hypothesis that we are putting forward, that infections are widespread, they're just not being uh, detected widely. And further evidence for this is here. Omicron BA2 uh, in the United States in April 16th. So 93.4 of the coronavirus variants circulating in the States are BA2. And this is what we're anticipated for a long time. But for the United States as a whole, 19% are BA2. Uh, to 12.1, this new uh, subvariant, this new uh, mutation of the BA2. Um, and this BA2.12.1 uh, contains additional mutations linked to immune evasion. Now, if these are linked to immune evasion, what that means is people can get symptomatic 
or, or they can get infection, probably symptomatic infection if they've been vaccinated. And even if they've had previous infection, so for example, if they've had uh, alpha or original Wuhan type virus, or if they've had Delta virus, they can still get reinfected with the BA2 12 point, BA12.1 uh, variant because of the immune escape. We're hoping that the vast majority of people are minimally symptomatic, but we have evidence that a lot of people have symptomatic infection now in the States, but are simply not testing, which, as we say, arguably is very good news because it is increasing natural immunity really quite dramatically. Uh, New York State Health Department, uh, BA212 uh, and BA212.1, uh, the most common prevalent uh, versions in central New York State. So these new two subvariants of BA2 are the most common ones in the United States at the moment. And the reason that we think this is going to go on growing, as we've already seen the evidence, 23 to 27% growth advantage over the original BA2. So this will outcompete BA2. It is competing, outcompeting BA2. BA1 is history, the same as Delta is history. Essentially, there might be a very tiny minority of cases. But basically, the global strain as we enter endemicity is going to be these BA2 sub-variants. They're Omicron, so they've got less pathogenicity than the Delta. Um, but the Omicron, even though they've got immune escape for the vaccines, which, of course, remember, the vaccines are actually designed for the very original Wuhan strain. Ancient history now, really, but we're still using the same vaccines. There's going to be immune escape from previous variants, but there's going to be less immune escape from Omicron because they are subvariants of Omicron. And remember, even though there's changes to the spike protein, the, the rest of the antibodies and the immunity generated in the B and T cells is going to be the same for the other components of the of the virus. So um, th this is actually, I think this is actually pretty good news from the States. And I, I really believe that to all practical terms now, the, the pandemic in the United States is really abating quite quickly. Now, just another piece of evidence that sort of supports this from Stahl. Again, he, he's written in. Um, Stahl says, uh, when see his doctor in Mississippi, uh, and I asked him um, if he expected another wave. This is if his doctor expected another wave. And this makes a lot of sense. Listen to this. And he said that the original Omicron wave was so massive here that BA2 is not likely to do much here, except in the parts of the country that were locked down for the first Omicron wave. Quite profound. In other words, the Omicron wave has been a good thing. It's really a pity that people have decided to, um, almost you could argue it's a pity that people have decided to protect themselves against it because it's, the, it's generating lots and lots of natural immunity. Uh, he, this is the doctor, said they just have a couple of patients with COVID in hospital, in, in, in the hospital where he works, which is one of the state's largest hospitals, so people aren't being hospitalised, and the data we saw is consistent with that. And they aren't even being segregated from other patients. So um, that, that, now this is interesting. Um, so it looks like in Mississippi, and if you're, if you're a clinician in Mississippi, do confirm this, please, or, or tell me it's wrong. Um, patients testing positive for BA2 Omicron or its subvariants in Mississippi, according to this, um, are not being segregated from other patients. Now, in the UK, they are, and it's causing a lot of problems in hospital because a lot of the problems we're having is, is isolating people. Now, a lot of the people that are admitted with COVID are not sick. They're incidental findings. So there's going to have to come a time when someone in the health service decides not to test everyone who comes into hospital. Because we have to make that decision at some point. I really hope someone has got the courage to make that decision fairly quickly, that we're going to stop testing everyone who comes into hospital because we can't keep doing this forever. And that means we wouldn't have to do all these special segregation measures. I mean, this isn't quite, this isn't quite as, as bad as it sounds. I mean, um, in accident and emergency, where I was working recently, there's a test called a D-dimer test. And uh, basically, we, we don't very often don't test for that because we know it's going to be elevated in some conditions. And when it's elevated, you have to sort of be seen to be doing things about it. But to all practical intents and purposes, for most people, it's not that relevant. So, again, in this situation, 
it could be that simply not testing people coming into hospital in the UK um, allows ignorance to be bliss. Sooner or later, sooner or later, someone's going to have to make that uh, decision. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later. Now, I am going to go on to the UK and the Chinese data in a minute, but I think I'll just leave that one there uh, because I don't want to go on for too long and we'll come back as a separate video and we'll look at the UK and the bizarre things that are going on in China. So thank you for watching this one.